Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is the FM8 by Happy Nerdin. The FM8 essentially does exactly what its name implies. It's going to help you with anything frequency modulation related. Well, Technically speaking, it's phase modulation, uh, but the biggest difference between frequency modulation and phase modulation is that by using phase modulation, again, what this one does, uh, the resulting sound will be a lot brighter. Um, but then again, this is again uh, something that allows for true through zero modulation of your frequencies and phases. So this does become very handy for those who want to truly explore a bit more uh, when it comes to uh, sound designing, frequency modulation, uh, expressiveness and the likes. So I do have to thank Happy Nerdin for sponsoring this episode and by providing the FM8 uh, for this video. Um, and other than that, I would just say, uh, hope you guys are gonna enjoy this because uh, here we go. So here we go. Let's have a look at the FM8 by Happy Nerdin. Um, it's, well, from, from <laughs> at a first glance, you might think, well, this is very straightforward, right? So you've got two pods, uh, one for the frequency modulation amount and one for the CV amount. And the CV amount is essentially uh, an attenuverter for the CV inputs. And this then, of course, controls the amount of frequency modulation as well. You've got two inputs, one for the modulation uh, signal and one for the carrier signal and the uh, modulation is of course normal into the carrier one, so you can do um, self-modulation uh, based on the amount of uh, frequency modulation you wanna do. And then you've got your four, well, wave shapes coming out of that as well. So the first thing that I want to do is I just wanna quickly grab a ramp signal from my ONA. So the ONA is might be a bit of an odd um, sound source to do this with because one of the recommended shapes to work with is a saw um, a saw shape but as we are going to be using the buff Jarvis I'm easily capable of actually saying well once I have that I can just invert that oh that's the wrong one and we have our saw signal there so uh, no worries there whatsoever so I'm also going to grab one of them and put that into the input of my mixer so we can actually listen to it. There you go. So this is the first signal we're gonna be working with. If I then also grab, um, let's say, the saw output from FM8 and patch that into Buff Jarvis 2 and make sure that we patch that correctly so we can actually see what we get. There you go. Make sure we also get some of that sound out of it. Let's turn this down. So currently we have no signal coming out of the Buff Jarvis or the FM8, but I'm just gonna patch in the, let's turn this down all the way, that saw shape into the modulation in. And I'm just gonna slightly open up the, there you go. And as said, this can then also be controlled uh, by something like, um, like, I'm just gonna be using maths for now. So I'm just gonna patch this in, make sure that we have something of a, there we go. So I'm just, I've just patched in a slow LFO into the CV in, and that's gonna then do that. That was Siri, apologies. <laughs> so I just got a new uh, watch just um, a couple of weeks back, so I still need to get used to it. I had, I had a very old Apple watch that was approximately like six years old or something. 
and now I need to get used to one of those new ones, so it's, it's much better, but enough said about that. So we now have this, let me just quickly disconnect this, there we go, and turn this all the way down. What you can also do is instead of just using the modulation in, you can also just use the carrier in. So even though the frequency modulation is all the way down, this is already just letting the carrier wave through of course. And then you can also do some self modulation or I might want to describe this more as a wave folding exercise. It's not exactly wave folding if you ask me but it does create similar sounds. So if we then instead of using the well, the, uh, the inverted ramp or in this case of course the well, let's say the uh, the saw wave. If I got turn this back, but if we then grab a pulse wave, so again this is on the carrier. But if we do it in the mod, that's nice. Uh, if we grab a triangle wave. If we grab a sign, and then we might want to grab another output. It's crazy, right? So then, if we grab, let's say, let's uh, keep this in for now, and maybe just grab. Well, yeah, that's about it. Let's uh, make sure that we get the saw back there you go so we have the saw signal back need to invert that again there we go and i'm then going to introduce another signal and this time it's coming from the vco by mrg synthesizer so i'm just going to patch in another saw wave and i'm just going to make sure that we have that connected so we can actually see what we're working with so now we see the second one popping up there and I'm just going to make sure that we can also listen to that. So this is the new signal and what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to grab this and patch that into the carrier there. So maybe one of the interesting things is that if we turn this all the way down is that the MRG synthesizer VCO it does output uh, 10 volts per uh, uh, 10 volts um, so I might want to attenuate that so it just goes below or around 5 volts something like that so it's at the same level as the Ona by by Nano so this makes that quite okay and if I then just make sure that we listen to both of these signals at the same time. So this is the, this is, this, these are just the, the two dry signals coming from both the VCOs. As you can see, there is some development happening there. Something like that. So let's turn these down and let's listen to what this sounds like when we start to frequency modulate that. So again, currently the um, the lower frequency is the is the carrier and the higher frequency is the modulator. quite nice if we then switch these around and we can then of course start to do a lot of nice things with this if we start to play with the frequencies That's beautiful, isn't it? So that's quite nice. So 
Uh, let's again. Let's try this again, but then again with the pulse. I'm just going to repatch this real quickly. There you go. <laughs> so this is almost um, a pulse with modulation on steroids, right? I, I love it. So these are some some of the beautiful things that you can then do. So what I'd like to do is just quickly see if we can use some something like this to uh, already create some something that sounds a bit more musical than just listening to these drones. If we want to listen to drone. this and I'm just starting to create some some nice things so now I'm combining a um, uh, what's it again we're combining both the pulses into trying to create something that resembles a uh, a saw and then maybe if I do something like that I will turn this up a bit That very slow evolution of the of the wave shapes. That's of course what we're looking for. So I might want to just turn this down a teeny tiny bit and make this really slowly progressing. So that's a nice drone that we then got there. So I'm just going to make sure that we grab something that's going to add some melody to it. So currently, I'm just modulating the carrier. That's one thing that we can do. But if we then change this around. <laughs> That's noisy, isn't it? Maybe if we then grab this one. I still think that I enjoyed this a bit more. But instead of just listening to this, let's just uh, patch this through to a... Uh, that's the wrong one. Let's patch this into my VCA here. So, in there. Disconnect these, because we're not going to be needing those. And then I'm just going to patch this from permits into maths and we're just going to grab the app from maths and use that for this one there you go 
and then just grab the output and patch it in there. So now we would have to have something. And now the beauty is, of course, that we can even start to modulate the amount of frequency modulation by using something like that same envelope that we've got there. So if I then grab, let's say, this cable from here and patch that into the CV, Or we can make it negative. I do like it more in a positive note. Maybe add a bit more. So this is one of the beautiful things that you can then start to create. And you can actually start to use these sounds in, your, in the rest of your patches as well. So I'm just gonna create something that resembles at least something musically. So I'm just gonna grab a nice bass drum from Foundation. something a bit more interesting. and maybe add some snare to it as well. There you go. And maybe add some some hi hats to it. Let's see how we can grab some hi hats. Something like this, right? So 
So now we've heard how you can indeed create some nice frequency modulated sounds uh, with the FM8 by Happy Nerding. But one of the other things I also want to do is I want to pack some of these percussion sounds through it as well. So first things first, let's uh, make sure that we turn this down. So first let's start with the actual, where is it again? There we go. So I'm just gonna disconnect these, there we go. And I'm just gonna start with the bass drum that we've got. So that's the uh, foundation. Make sure that we just turn this up all the way. So now we've got the this is coming in and we're grabbing that sound. Let's grab the I'm not getting the actual sound I like from oh there we go. This was the wrong one. Apologies for that. There we go. So now we should be able to get, this is now the, this was the original one. No. Oh, let's disconnect the CP there too. And then if we introduce, This is it patched into the carrier, but if we do that into the modulate, maybe increase the. So that's the sound of the bass drum. So let's repatch that. Make sure that we get that sound back. There we go. So this is again the original one. So let's grab the the snare that we were using. And let's patch that in. So again, nothing if we have it on Makes it really nice and noisy, right? And there is, of course, already a lot of noise in a in a snare drum. Really nice, I like I like it. And then last and certainly not least, let's make sure that we grab the the last one in as well. So let's just disconnect this. Make sure that we have our snare drum back. And let's grab the the hi-hats. That doesn't do that much for the, uh, for the actual hi-hats. I might want to. Uh, these are of course quite noisy. So that doesn't do too much for my hi-hats. Maybe if I put them as a carrier. Actually, have a feeling it makes it a bit more melodious. Actually, I 
Uh, but still, I love it. These are the things I like to do with it. Let's uh, turn this down. Make sure that we grab something that we can work with. There we go. and a bit of compression on there. like this uh, <laughs> quick video on FM8 let's go back to the studio because I'm just gonna send everyone back home So I truly hope you enjoyed this video on the FM8 by Happy Nerdy. Um, as its name implies, this is a very specific module uh, that you can use in your rack. And one of the first things that, I, that came to mind to me is, well, I already have some uh, oscillator modules that have a dedicated frequency functionality built right into it. 
and I still have that feeling that this module does earn its keep within my rack uh, for the simple reason that I have this distinct feeling that this goes beyond any sort of frequency modulation that I can do with, for instance, the uh, Ona by Nano. Uh, but it's also something where I like to have something very dedicated in place. So if I do decide to switch out some of my oscillators, I still can rely upon the uh, the FM module I have in my rack. And therefore, I can only well, strongly recommend this because it's been well, a lot of fun just playing with this and uh, exploring that phase modulation or frequency modulation, whatever you uh, prefer, um, that, that whole world altogether. So I do think that there's still a lot of frequency modulation and phase modulation things for me to learn. Um, as you know, I've only been doing this for 11 months. So uh, there's a whole world out there where I can still go and explore and learn a lot. So if you've got any recommendations, please uh, drop them in the uh, comment section below or just drop me a line at Jesper at the Modular Clubhouse. That being said, I do want to thank Happy Nerdin and Ego specifically for making this episode possible. So again, thank you so much. But I also want to thank all my viewers, you at home, on your mobile device, on your laptop, on your iPad, on your, on your TV, watching this, uh, this channel. Thank you so much. It truly uh, warms my heart to see all the people that uh, like, subscribe, uh, but also just to sh see the sheer amount of people that watch this. That's just great. So please keep keep, keep up that and I'll uh, make sure to uh, have a lot of content on the one hand in return. Um, but what I also have is I try to work with some of the Eurorack shops and uh, Eurorack providers out there. So as you know, we uh, used to have a, well, we still have a very special offer for uh, everything you want to buy from Super Synthesis. But on top of that, for our US um, audience, and if you have anything planned to purchase in this holiday season, uh, please drop in on our uh, Discord server because we do have a 5% discount code for Perfect Circuit. And that is not just a time limited offer. That's something that we have there very special for uh, the complete audience of this channel. So if you do have anything planned, drop on the uh, Discord server, grab that code and make sure that you have 5% uh, off for your complete uh, purchase. Uh, not just now, but also in five months, in three months, in six months, in two years, that code is going to be there. So make sure that you uh, join our Discord server. The URL for that is down below. So make sure to do that. At the same time, if you've got any else, any other purchases scheduled, please use one of the affiliate links because that's uh, how I uh, try to make sure that it doesn't uh, cost too much money. Um, for now, I would just say, please everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you for my next video. See you then. Cheers.